To prepare our flasks, the first thing we're going to do is wash them. Flasks are the only thing that we wash with um, our distilled water from our wash bottle. So I'm going to squeeze down on my wash bottle at the same time. I'm actually going to rotate my flask while um, positioning the ends of my wash bottle so that I get all the walls on the inside. I don't know who else has been using my flasks. I don't know where else my flasks have been. So I'm going to give them a wash and just like my other pieces of equipment, the magic number is three. We're going to wash stuff out three times. We're going to do that with all of our flasks. You'll also notice that um, as I'm washing my flasks, my whole bench is actually quite tidy and that my chemicals and my other pieces of equipment are out of the way. Now that's quite important because the last thing I want is any spill, which I'm going to have to waste time cleaning up. The other thing is that during my cleaning up process, if I get a spill on any other piece of equipment, then I have to go ahead and start cleaning that one up as well. Now conical flasks you don't have to dry. I always see people drying their conical flasks off with a paper towel. It's not necessary. So don't waste your time doing that. Second rinse for this one. Third rinse for this one. Remember, we aim to get as much of the wall down as possible. Now to prepare my flasks ready for a titration, I'm going to go ahead and grab aliquots using my pipette. Um, in this case, I'm actually trying to determine the concentration of my sodium carbonate. So that's going to go inside my conical flask. I'm going to prepare two conical flasks at the start and I'll tell you why during the titration. Now to get that, um, to get my 10 mils from my pipette, I'm just going to place my pipette filler over the top just gently and I'm going to hold um, the pipette and the pipette filler with one hand but at the same time notice where my fingers and my thumb are, I'm actually gripping both of those together. I'm going to move my sodium carbonate closer and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly draw up some of my sodium carbonate. Notice that I want to keep the tip of my pipette submerged in that beaker because I don't want any air. If I get any air bubbles or anything like that in my pipette, then I have to remove my pipette filler and start again. Also, as I'm pipetting up, none of the solution should ever be drawn so far up that it reaches inside the pipette filler. I don't know what other person has been using this pipette filler. Maybe they've drawn other contaminants up into this pipette filler. So we're going to bring this volume up just above that horizontal line. We're going to hold the suction and this is the fun bit because if you prefer to use the pipette filler, you'll notice on the side there is a little button, well it's actually not very little, there is a button that you could squeeze down on and our goal is to get the meniscus of this liquid sitting just above that line. I don't actually like this method very much and you'll see why. I'm going to give it a very light push and I've already gone past. Now I have to submerge my tip back, draw it back up, let that go, and I've gone past again. Now I actually am not pushing very hard on that side button, but this feels like guess and check. It's very difficult, it's very frustrating to use that side button. So the reason why I didn't push my pipette so far into my pipette filler is because I'm actually going to remove my pipette filler and use my thumb instead. So take it off, put your thumb over the top. Now I've just lost it, that's fine because now I know that I'm just going to sit my pipette filler gently over the top, draw up just a little bit more liquid and as long as it's gently sitting on top, it's going to be easy to take off quickly. So take it off quickly, nope, try again. Sit that over the top. Now my thumb's over the top. My goal now is to just hold on gently with my thumb over the top. And I'm going to use my other hand, I'm going to bring it in. And I'm just going to twist very slowly until this liquid slowly falls. And until that meniscus sits just on top of that line. Now this is the fun part, it's also the long part. This is where titrating or pipetting becomes an art form. 
and obviously you can tell that it's been a year since I've pipetted, but as long as I twist and open a hole, as long as I have some drainage in there, then I'm actually not going to twist very much. I don't want to open it up too much. I don't want to accelerate the draining because I don't need to. As long as it's a steady drain, it's going to be easy for me to suddenly stop the draining. Once the meniscus sits on top of the line, we stop. We bring it over to our conical flask. We hold our, um, we hold our pipette. We give the outside a wipe down. We hold our conical flask at a 30 degree-ish angle. We must always touch the tip of the pipette to the wall inside the glass. It has to be a clean wall inside the glass and then we let it drain. I don't shake my pipette, I don't force my liquid down, I let gravity do all that work for me. You'll notice that as it's draining, there's a little drop left at the bottom. I'm gonna tap it very gently three times uh, to that glass. One, two, three, that's done. I'm gonna sit my pipette down, but remember what I said about pipettes, be careful where you place them. So place them between two pieces of equipment, there's still some liquid on the side of my conical flask. We are going to wash that down using a wash bottle. If you want to be a bit safe, move your solutions off to the side so you don't get any um, risks of spills and contamination. Just wash that drop down. Hooray. Oh, I'm also going to go ahead and add indicator. I'm just going to use one drop in this case. Now as for how many drops of indicator you need actually depends on how that indicator was prepared by your lab technician. So my advice to students is to actually use just one drop and look at the color and see how intense it is. In this case, I only need one drop. It's pretty yellow. I can see, it's, um, I can see that it's a very intense yellow. So I definitely do not need a second or a third drop. I'm just going to sit that off to the side. I did say earlier that I wanted to prepare two flasks to start off with. So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for my second flask. You'll notice that I just move stuff out of the way because I don't want to create a random spill. I want space. I want, um, I want to make sure that nothing is ever contaminated. So bring that up. Pass that horizontal mark in my pipette. Remember, no air bubbles. If there's air bubbles, we start again. Bring it up high, but not too high, because we don't know who else was using this pipette filler. Take off the tip, put your thumb over the top, and slowly twist with your other hand. This one's clamped down, but I'm, I'm actually not forcing it down too much. There's just enough to just kind of stop the liquid from um, falling by itself. So twist with your other arm. Nice and slowly, you want that meniscus to sit just on top of that horizontal line. Remember to get to eye level. And remember, as soon as it's draining, you don't have to do anything else. Just hold still. Don't accelerate the draining process. It makes it harder. Sit the meniscus on top and you're done. There's still a drop left over there. So before I transfer it, I'm going to give the outside a precautionary wipe down. Bring it over. Remember, the flask has to be at a 30-ish degree angle. We always touch the tip of the pipette to, the, uh, to a clean surface inside the glass and then let it drain. We let it drain, we let gravity do the work. Never do I shake the pipette or blow down on the pipette. We also never ever pipette by mouth. There is always going to be a drop left over at the end of the pipette. Tap three times, one, two and three. Place your pipette down carefully between two pieces of equipment or two bottles. Move your stuff off to the side so that you don't get any risk of uh, contamination. Uh, we also remember that we had some chemical left over on that inner wall from the pipette, so we're going to wash that down with our wash bottle. Come on, wee wash bottle. Okay, we're then going to add one drop of indicator because, like last time, one drop of indicator was actually enough for us. I'm going to add that one drop of indicator straight down the middle.